Yeah. Hello everyone. Our group will be presenting on hydraulic cylinders types and its classification. An actuator is used to convert the energy of a fluid back into the mechanical power. A pump driven by a prime mover such as electric motor creates a flow of fluid in which the pressure, direction and rate of flow are controlled by valves. The amount of output power developed depends upon the flow rate, the pressure drop across the actuator and its overall efficiency. Thus, hydraulic actuators are devices used to convert pressure energy of the fluid into mechanical power. A hydraulic cylinder is a mechanical device that uses the incompressibility of a hydraulic fluid to produce linear force. It consists of a cylindrical barrel, a piston and a rod. The barrel is filled with hydraulic fluid and the piston is fitted tightly inside the barrel. The rod is attached to the piston and extends from end of the barrel. Characteristics of Hydraulic Cylinders 1. Linear Actuation Hydraulic cylinders produce linear force which means that they can push or pull objects in a straight line. 2. Power Hydraulic cylinders can generate a significant amount of force even with a small bore size. Precision Hydraulic cylinders can be controlled very precisely allowing for precise, precise positioning of objects. Durability Hydraulic cylinders are built to withstand harsh condition and heavy use. Versatility Hydraulic cylinders are used in a wide range of applications including construction, manufacturing and transportation. There are four types of hydraulic cylinders. 1. Single acting cylinder 2. Double acting cylinder 3. Telescope cylinder and lastly, tandem cylinder. Now I am going to talk about single acting cylinder. In single acting cylinder, it consists of a piston inside a cylindrical housing called as barrel. One hand is attached to a rod and which can reciprocate. At the opposite end, there is a port for the entrance and exit of the oil. They produce force only in one direction by hydraulic pressure acting on the piston. The return of the spring is not done hydraulically. It is either done by gravity or spring. According to the type of return, single acting cylinders are classified as gravity return single acting cylinder and spring return single acting cylinder. So in gravity return single acting cylinder is of two type. Number one is push type. In push type, the cylinder extends to lift a weight against the force of gravity by applying oil pressure at the blank end. The oil is passed through the blank end port or pressure port to retract the cylinder. The pressure is simply removed from the piston by connecting the pressure port to the tank. This allows the weight of the load to push the fluid out of the cylinder back to the tank. So the second type is pull type. So in pull type, gravity return gravity return single acting cylinder, the cylinder lifts the weight by retracting. The blank end port is the pressure port. This cylinder automatically extends however the pressure port is connected to the tank. So, going with the spring return single acting cylinder, it also has two types, push type and pull type. So, in push type, when the pressure is applied to the cylinder, it extends. So, when the pressure is removed from the cylinder, it retracts with the help of spring return. So, in going with the pull type, so when we apply the pressure, it retract the spring. So when we remove the pressure, it get extended with the help of the spring. So going with the double acting cylinder, a double acting cylinder with a piston on both sides is a cylinder with a rod extending from both the ends. The application involved in a process where work can be done by both the end of the cylinder, whereby making the cylinder more 
productive. Double acting cylinder can withstand higher side load because they have an extra bearing on each road to withstand the loading. So it is also divided into two types. Number one is double acting cylinder with a piston rod on one side and number two double acting cylinder with a piston rod on both the side. So in in double acting cylinder with piston rod on one side when when the pressure is applied from the pressure port it extend the cylinder and to retract the cylinder the pressure is applied to the other side so going with the double acting cylinder with the piston rod on both the side when we give pressure from the pressure port it it extend the cylinder in one side and when we give the pressure to the other side it also extend the cylinder to the other side now i'm going to talk on telescopic cylinder they generally consist of nets of tube and operates on the displacement principle the tubes are supported by bearing rings the innermost set of which have grooves or channels to allow the fluid flow the front bearing assembly on each section includes seals and wiper rings. The stop ring limits the movement of each section, thus preventing the separation. For a given input flow rate, the speed of operation increases in step as each successive section reaches the end of each stroke. Similarly, for a specific pressure, the load shifting capacity decreases for each of the successive sessions. And some of the application of telescopic cylinder include hydraulic cranes, high lift frog trucks, pump trucks, and dipper wagons. Now I will talk on the working of telescopic cylinder. Firstly, the extension. During the extension stroke, the fluid is fed through the extended port, and now the fluid forced first stage piston to the right until it is fully extended. This in turn moves the larger piston to the right until both the piston are fully extended into the body of the cylinder. Now the retraction. During the retraction stroke, the fluid is fed into the first stage piston. Therefore, first stage piston is forced to the left until it uncovers the fluid path connecting this with the second stage piston. This in turn moves the larger piston to the right until both the piston are fully retracted into the body of the cylinder. Now the tandem cylinder. A tandem cylinder is used in application where a large amount of force is required to be applied for a small diameter cylinder. Pressure is applied to the both piston resulting in increased force because of the large area. The only drawback is that this cylinder must be longer than a standard cylinder to achieve an equal speed because the flow must go to both the piston simultaneously. Now the working of tandem cylinder. Firstly, the extension. When the hydraulic fluid is supplied to the tandem cylinder, it extends. It exerts pressure on the piston inside each cylinder. This pressure causes the piston to extend outward, resulting in extension of the cylinder. The extension can be controlled and synchronized using valves and a control system. Now the retraction. To retract the tandem cylinder, the fluid pressure is released or reduced. This allows the internal spring or external force to retract the piston and consequently the cylinder. Retraction can be precisely controlled through the fluid flow and pressure regulation. These are some of the graphical symbol of hydraulic cylinder with explanation. Thank you for watching the video and have a good one.